Hey friends, it's Shane from HowToRinch.com and I am making a little like introduction video here today on how I'm going to attempt to repair a carburetor that came into the How to Wrench shop that is really junked. It should just be thrown away. Uh, the last technician, somebody worked on it, uh, made a big mistake. I'm going to show you what that is in a second here. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to repair a cracked carburetor where the body of the carburetor is actually cracked, the casted aluminum. And if that's caught your attention, stay tuned. I'm going to talk about, you know, how I'm going to go about that. The next video will actually show the repair. But before I dive into unknown territory, I thought I'd give our community and our viewers a chance to say, oh yeah, it's awesome, I've done that, or hell no, don't do that, or... Uh, give it a try. What do you got to lose? I'm really curious what you what you all are gonna think like good idea bad idea So why don't we grab the camera? Let's get in close Show you what's broke and what I'm gonna do or what my plan is to attempt to fix this carburetor That should be thrown in the garbage Stay tuned. Have you hit that subscribe button that notification bell? You're gonna be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up all right, so what we have here is a 2007 uh, CRF 250R carburetor off Honda dirt bike. And no big deal. We get this stuff all the time. People watch the videos and say, oh, hey, you know what? How much would you charge just to do it? We knock it out. I'm a huge fan of OEM parts, but in this particular carburetor, uh, there's been a lot of uh, good notes and stuff on the forums from All Balls uh, using their carb kit for this. So this would have been what we do. Make sure it's going to work. That's not going to leak or anything else. And then just go about fixing it. You can see that multiple people been in this because there's actually about two carburetors here, but there's only one body. There's double the jets, double the mixture screws, double the screws, all kinds of stuff. And let me get close here and show you what's actually wrong and why the carburetor is junked and technically should be thrown in the garbage. So you all know, you've seen play of my videos. If you haven't, get over the playlist. But I always diagnose anything that comes to me. So we put fuel in that, and we basically wet test the carburetor to duplicate the customer's complaint that, hey, it's leaking. But we take it a step further, and we identify where it's leaking. A lot of times, you all out there are just like, oh, my carburetor's leaking, but I don't know where. So if you haven't seen how to do that, check out the other videos. But we went ahead, and when we were doing our leak test, it was a slow leak, too, by the way. See that hole? In the casting so you can see on this fuel inlet here goes across here and there's that hole right there and you probably asking yourself well how'd that hole get there so take a look at the carburetor itself here and you could see this crack right here and so this is a bowl screw and if you think about it when you install the screw it's in clockwise fashion so the tighter you go with this it's actually spreading this apart basically creating a bigger gap and it's going to break off like that ear is just going to break you keep tightening it it's going to be a point that's just going to break off but you're still probably asking yourself you're like honda's not known for like casting problems or or anything like that here i shouldn't speak for the history of the whole company and every single product but in my experience i don't run into honda carburetors being a casting issue and having any flaws there so you have to ask yourself this comes down to human air what what do you think happened or what do you think went wrong well, I know exactly what went wrong because I see this a fair amount, especially on Harley-Davidson carburetors. This is a common place on Harley on the air filter housing. What they do is they use the wrong bolt or specifically too long a bolt. And then what happens is it bottoms out. So in this case, that bolt had nowhere else to go. We're only in a four millimeter bolt, so we don't have a lot of thread contact. They keep cranking on it. You're much stronger with your screwdriver than that a little aluminum ear and housing it doesn't have anywhere to go pops out the aluminum cracks the carb and then you're having a bad day and you might be asking yourself like how does anybody do that like how do you get the wrong screw well a lot of times it's these kits so these kits come with bowl screws some of the quote unquote better ones so here's one unopened okay and I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got some longer screws I could tell and some shorter ones. And the longer ones, if I believe are correct, are for the cap. I'm not sure of that. I gotta figure that out yet. But there's longer and shorter. So the problem is 
as you can see the bolts that were supplied to me here take a look here one of them is longer so I feel really confident that my diagnosis on this is that they used too long a bolt and they did that and like I said I've seen this happen plenty of times and it's unfortunate and that's why when you go to aftermarket parts, you have to be careful and use some caution. A lot of times these even these kits might fit a range of years where you don't use everything. You use some in one and not in another or so on. I mean, you just you got to know what you're doing. If you're just poking and stabbing, you're going to end up in stuff like this and get yourself into a lot of trouble. So one of the things I always like to, you know, think about is that as I'm tightening all this down and I tighten everything by hand and I take a look at it, if I'm still unsure if there's different length bolts, go to the OEM Honda parts fish and find out. Sometimes they'll even tell you the sizes. But more importantly, if they show that this bowl requires four screws and they're all the same part number, then that tells you that they're all going to be a certain length, that they're all the same. So there's your clue number one. Sometimes what I'll do if I get into a pickle is I'll go and I'll just order one to then determine what is the right one for all the stuff that I have, especially when somebody sends me like a basket case. And you can imagine how nice that is, like let's say on a motor, you know, where it's a part in a thousand pieces. I will have people bring me entire engines. That's not the case here. This is a really cool collaboration project we're doing uh, on this R6 motor. We're gonna be coming up uh, by doing thinner head gasket and degree and cams and so on with uh, August Racing. That's gonna be cool. You should tune back in for that. But my point is, back to where I'm going, I'm being squirrel chasing around here, is that when I have a, a ton of fasteners that go in something, and if the parts fish calls for 16 of the same fastener, but I got a bucket full of bolts, I can just order one OEM one so I know I have the right one, and then I can do that job and kind of figure out the puzzle. I hope that makes sense there. That's, that's a way to take all of these parts, if you're not sure where they go, and then figure out where, where they do need to go in, in the right size. Because the service manual, all it's going to tell you is take out four bolts, put in four bolts. They don't tell you what size and, and uh, like dimensional stuff about the parts. So you still got to use some other resources. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's, here's what I'm going to tackle on this that you may think is crazy. You may say throw that carburetor away. Or you might say, man, I want to know if this is going to work. I'm going to clean it up really good, and then I'm sure all you say, saw this aluminum uh, rod that I've seen it on. It first showed up, of course, on like Instagram, and then it started showing up in Facebook ads, of course, because I clicked on it once. And then uh, I started watching other people's videos, and they were having some pretty shocking success of like welding pieces of angle together and beating it with a hammer and finding out how strong. Matter of fact, there's a couple videos. I'll put the links below. Uh, a lot of my subs subscribe to these other channels too. Uh, and uh, you might recognize them and, and kind of laugh about that too. You may have already even seen the dang video on it. So I'm not interested in using this for structural, meaning like you know, right angles and, and making brackets or things like that. I don't have a project that I felt comfortable enough to experiment or try this on. But in the case of this carburetor, actually I'll keep, keep that rod. In the case of this carburetor, where basically I want to create a, a V groove in there and then basically melt it and bond it together between the two halves and it's not broke off. I'll tuck around this corner in here and then obviously fill the hole and patch it up here. And I feel like I can get all this material scraped off and wire brushed enough and I can, you know, heat it up to where I'm not going to like deform the crap out of it. I've got to take this brass fitting out because there's O-rings in there. But I mean, I, I feel like I can make this work. I really do. And it's going to be pretty exciting to find out like, can I take this carburetor? It should be junked. And can I get it to quit leaking? But I'm going to tell you this. When you come back for part two, and this may take me a week or so to do, by the way, if you're if you're a sub on the channel. When you come back for part two, I'm going to show exact details of me practicing with this rod and finding out like a melting point. And I'm going to play around with it. I've never used it before. I'm not going to go right to the carburetor, but I will put that in the video and kind of show you, you know, how it was working out uh, and what that was going to look like. And then the other thing 
that I got to make sure and be prepared to do is you can't just simply get it to quit leaking fuel and be like, oh, it's good. The service manuals never have torque specs for these small fasteners. I know it's something that drives a lot of us crazy, like, yeah, a million torque specs, just tell us how tight to make it. Well, they don't supply that information, but we can use uh, generic torque charts and, and start to look at, you know, steel fasteners and aluminum body, and we could come up with some, like, general understanding of how tight that should be. And then you've seen in some of my other videos, or if you haven't, get over to the uh, uh, torque playlist for torquing fasteners. I've got these really small uh, torque wrenches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it. There's a really good chance that aluminum is going to pour into uh, that hole, which means I'm probably going to have to possibly drill and tap and, and bring it back to life. So I'll show you how to use a thread pitch gauge, how to, you know, get, this was just for sizing the bolt actually. Uh, but I'm going to get it, get it to where I have full thread contact a hundred percent again, have it rocking and ready to go. That will come out of there just as easy as can be. But the big difference, the big difference between just saying, okay, I'll just tighten it up and see if it doesn't leak is I'm going to prove with the torque wrench that I can have equal torque on all four fasteners and that whatever weld material and area we put in here it doesn't crack once we weld it that's or excuse me once we torque it so that's going to be the big determining factor of a successful repair is number one uh you know does it seal and number two can it hold torque you know is this something we could take apart put together take apart I miss mean, a dirt bike People change things, they want to change jets, they put a pipe or a cam or air, air filter, change elevation. It's something that, you know, once you want to be able to have it serviceable, we don't want to have a, you know, it welded on, if you will. So we're looking to bring this car back into, like I said, normal, functional uh, serviceability and usage, be safe, not have any problems. So that's what we're going to be looking at. All right, my friends, there you have it. Uh, I'd be really interested if you wouldn't mind putting some stuff in the comments on have you ever used this uh, aluminum brazing rod if you're a welder fabricator whatnot you got any tips or tricks it'd be awesome to hear from you as well um, before we tackle this especially if you've done anything around uh, the pop metal uh, cast metal if you will of uh, Japanese carburetors that'd be pretty cool too and hey man feel free to tell us too uh, if you think we're crazy if you think uh, chuck it throw it away if you think this is a waste of time you that we'll find out in the end uh, I'm pretty excited to do this. I think uh, I've had such a curiosity around this, and the only thing I'm kind of halfway debating on is if I should order a thicker rod so that I have some different stuff to play with. I, I have a feeling that this is gonna this is gonna melt pretty fast, and that might work to my favor, and it might not. I'll find out when I do a, a practice sample on some sheet metal, but. Anyway, that's what we have going on. And so uh, if you haven't done so yet, make sure and like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And uh, please tune back in for part two when we actually fix this to find out, I should say attempt to fix this, to find out whether it worked. All right, my friends, uh, make it a great day. We're over here. We're back at it. Nights and weekends uh, been really busy uh, during the day with a full-time job, but we are back nights and weekends to uh, try and make great content and get it out to you. So love having you on here. As always, keep wrenching, and we'll talk to you again soon.